Hi, I'm Katrina. And I'm Belinda. Welcome to Crumbs 13. So today we're on part three of Ruth. Um, thank you for joining us today. And if you haven't listened to one and two, you should dive into those. But um, each one brings its own um, its own flavor. Mm -hmm. It's really impactful. So Yeah, it really is. But um, just to kind of give you a quick summary of the first two chapters, because we're going into chapter three today. Um, we see um, a woman who has two sons, her husband, Naomi, her husband is killed, and then her two sons also die. Um, and her two sons are married, and they have wives, and one of the wives, Ruth, um, refuses to leave her mother-in-law and goes with her mother-in-law out of Moab, there where she's from, um, back to having a... It's just Moab, I believe. I... Right, but goes back to... Um, the land of where are they at now <laughs> oh where they went to bethlehem bethlehem thank you bethlehem. <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna say it right they go back she to bethlehem me. which is where um naomi is from so um now they're together in bethlehem and we see actually in the last video some really interesting ways that ruth is noticed by boaz who is actually the son of um, the prostitute Rahab in the Bible. So there are so many awesome pieces to this and so much that points back to Jesus. And so definitely encourage you to go back and listen. But at the start of chapter three, we actually see a plan starting to formulate between Ruth yeah. and Naomi because Boaz has noticed Ruth. Um, and so we see at the beginning of chapter three, um, Naomi is giving Ruth some instructions on how to handle the situation. Yes, so Ruth has been gleaning in Boaz's field and has received great blessing from Boaz, not only in protection, but in provision. And, and then um, in Naomi putting together that he is a next of kin, um, the directions in which she gives on the front side of chapter three is that she tells her to, um, she has to, it's really powerful because it is like a, a it's almost like how we come to the Father too. So she um, she actually tells her that she needs to bathe, right? Like what I have a lot to say about that, but keep going. Oh goodness gracious! <laughs> <laughs> she is to bathe, and she is to put perfume on. She is to dress in her best, um, and she's not to let anyone see her. And then she is to go down once the party is over. And they have all gone to sleep. So there's a big celebration party. So let me back up. There's a big threshing um, floor party from the harvest. And all the harvester, the men of the harvest, all gather and they have this big party. And um, and it's a big celebration. There's lots of drinking. There's lots of eating. Uh, eating and <laughs> it's just a big celebration of the fruitfulness of the harvest. And so they usually just sleep there. And... Um, so that direction that um, Naomi gives Ruth is that she is to bathe, put perfume on, dress nice, make sure no one sees her, and then she's to lie down at Boaz's feet after he has fallen asleep, and she is to uncover um, his feet and lie down at his feet. And um, the spiritual end of this, symbolically to a believer, is so impactful and She's about coming out of her skin, so I'm gonna let her. Oh no, die. I'm just. You're oh, you right. ready? I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, you're okay. ready. See, she's ready. Um, so the a couple of things. Um, first of all, Levitical law was that when someone um, was widowed or even put in prison or owed a bunch of um, money to the government, like the Levitical law. If you go back and you look at, it's actually Matthew 22, um, 24. Um, in the New Testament, it even mentions how first of kin is responsible for helping family. So when Belinda was talking about first of kin, it all goes back um, to original uh, Jewish law. Um, but what I thought was so interesting in studying this is um, her telling her to go take a bath and put on perfume was so incredibly significant. Um, actually, back up until like the 1500s-ish, um, People only took a bath once a year. <laughs> so, and apparently, typically when they took a bath, they took a bath in May. I don't know why May, but they took a bath in May. 
And so that's why you see, that's why the tradition kind of stands that a lot of weddings happen in June is because people were bathed in May. Oh. And then when they took a bath, this is incredible to me, um, the men took a bath first and then the sons and then the wives. So they all use the same water? Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and then the children. And the last oh, person no. to take a bath was the baby. So that is where the saying comes from. Don't throw the baby out with the bath oh, water because the bath wow. water was so disgusting. Thank you, Lord, that we get a fresh shower often. Oh my gosh, like oh. seriously. And I couldn't help after studying this and, and learning about like even the, like, cause it's important when you're reading the Bible to understand during that time, what life looked like and how like us taking a shower every day is not significant now, but back then taking a bath was a very significant event. Yes. And then to put on perfume, um, it's even amazing to me. So when people would get married in June, I mean, they were still 30 days outside of their last bath usually. Um, <laughs> well, they were still smelling fresh, let's th face it. That is, where, <laughs> that is where the tradition of carrying a bouquet came from because oh. it covered up the smell. So super, wow. really fun things. <laughs> I never knew, but in getting in this word to come bring a word to oh. you all, the Lord is just showing me how significant it was that um, Ruth took a bath and that mm -hmm. Ruth put on perfume and how she made herself ready. Um, and then she took a humble posture of laying at his feet. And then it's so funny when she, when it says in scripture that she um, took the blanket off of his feet, I couldn't help but think about my own husband because he hates his feet uncovered and he hates his feet touched. Oh, and so funny. it really kind of made me chuckle. But um, so if someone uncovers your feet, eventually you're going to wake up. And so we, what we see here, she uncovers his feet, and then at midnight, Boaz wakes up from his feet mm -hmm. being uncovered, and he's startled to find a woman laying mm -hmm. at his feet. It's the start of a new day, too. That's interesting. Right. Midnight. So symbolically, I want to just quick hit this, too, because that's so fun with all of that. But symbolically, you know, um, I just want you to look at the symbolic meaning of these actions that Ruth took. So... To be bathed is um, like a baptism, like for us as believers, we are baptized in Jesus. We receive uh, the Lord as our Savior. We are baptized in Jesus. The perfume um, is symbolic of the the fragrance of the Father, and the incense are, is the sweet aroma of our prayers and our worship to Him. So. When that aroma of our prayers and our worship go up to him, that is the incense that they talk about in the tabernacle. And then she said, get dressed. You know, we are to clothe ourselves in Christ Jesus. So we, that means it's a multifaceted um, clothing. There is um, the clothing of the fruit of his spirit. There's the clothing of his armor. There's the clothing of his righteousness. And you can find all the things that it says put on Jesus. And so in, and then it says, see that, make sure that no one sees you. And that just made me think of how Jesus said, when you go into prayer and when you want to meet me intimately, you go into your closet. You don't do it so everyone can see. You do it intimately. And then um, and then the uncovering. Mm -hmm. The uncovering and um, is, is just that there's such power in placement and position. And, and the humility that she talks about, that whole lying down at his feet, was such a powerful placement because um, all throughout the New Testament, we there is this uh, strong theme about the feet of Jesus. And um, we, we see it where we see the woman who had the sinful life, who prepared Jesus with a fresh anointing at his feet. She washed his feet in, his, in her tears and then anointed mm. them at the feet of Jesus. Um, one of the scriptures that was super powerful was that um, there were people watching this and it affected so many. And it was that a man freed from demons that was clothed, that says that he was clothed fully and perfectly sane was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And, and all who saw were in awe. And, and so, um, and then it talks about we are his hands and feet. And then if you remember how doubting Thomas had to look at the hand of Jesus to see mm -hmm. the hands and feet of Jesus with the nail pierced spot. So 
symbolically <clears throat> positioning in her and what she's done um, in obedience in the direction is huge. Mm -hmm. um, God's scripture is a roadmap for us to use um, and it lays out what we're to do. And so in the awakening of Boaz at the start of a new day, really, mm -hmm. which is super cool, um, he, he again, first blesses her. Yeah. Which I find so powerful. We talked in the last video that, you know, there's so much blessing going on and he blesses her and he's like, the Lord bless you, my daughter. And the focus really is on the remaining um, part of the chapter is on virtue and character. Yes. Like Boaz speaks to her character and protecting her virtue. And um, it all goes back to her initial decision to not leave her, her mother-in-law and to serve the God of Israel um, in a sort of blind faith kind of way yes. because she... Um, it's from Moab, and that's not those, you know, the God of Israel was not the God that they served there, but she went against the grain. She looked different from everyone else. And in that, in the moving, in the sacrifice of moving out of her homeland, away from her family, um, to be with uh, Naomi, um, she then receives the protective covering of the God of Israel. And she receives it in so many different ways. She receives it through her mother-in-law giving her instruction on what to do. She receives it through Boaz and in the way that the Lord um, reveals her character and her virtue to Boaz. And then we see that continue, continue to be protected as Boaz is like, okay, don't let anyone see you as you leave because he doesn't want the rumor mill to start up. Yeah. He wants to protect her character, to protect her virtue. And here's the thing. Going back to this whole business of just being stinky all the time, like you really like have to have good character to attract a man. Mm -hmm. I mean, truly, like if, if you can take a bath once a year, <laughs> like what else is there? So, um, you know, I think that we've lost a lot of that in our culture because we put so much emphasis on vanity, but yet we sit here and, and we look at, um, we look at the blessing that comes from Boaz and how it's not about vanity. It's purely about character. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Verse 11, in that part of that blessing that Boaz spoke, it was now, he actually said to her, now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I will do what's necessary for everyone in town knows that you are a virtuous woman. And so what he was saying was that he he knew that there was another closer relative he spoke to her about mm -hmm. and that he was going to promptly um, go and meet with that relative and, and, and pretty much just lay it out saying, like, if you won't redeem her, I will. And I love the heart of the father in this because that is the heart he chases after us and he has gone to the biggest lengths to redeem you and that um the very and then on verse uh, 13 at the very end it was um he says surely as the lord lives i will redeem you myself now lie down mm -hmm. here till morning and so um he wants her to rest he doesn't want her to travel in the night he wants to keep her safe and and i love the heart of that yeah and the heart of that is not lust it's protection it's yeah. loyalty it's Again, virtue, um, it just looks completely different than what the dating world looks like now in our culture. So it's really quite beautiful. So then um, before morning light comes, he actually sends her with a gift. And it says six scoops of barley. But um, actually what I learned was that in Hebrew from from our commentary in our Bibles, because I know we're using the same one right now, um, Six is actually a number that's used in the Bible when they're unsure of the quantity that was used. Which oh, is interesting. That is interesting. So we don't know if it was really six scoops, but she sends her home, or he sends her home with a parting gift for her mother-in-law, which mm -hmm. I thought was also very beautiful, like mm -hmm. honoring her mother-in-law in this whole situation. There's a lot, there's so much to be said about the way that the person that you're courting or that's courting you is um, honoring of the parents, even mm -hmm. when they're not even your blood relative. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking about, here's Naomi, okay? So she's watching this whole thing and directing it and all of this excitement. So she 
she went back to her hometown totally grieving total changing her name to the to bitter and then and then the narrative comes back where she's identifying herself as we're identifying her as um naomi and and then she's directing her daughter-in-law and the and the fruitfulness and the provision of the father is coming alive in in what um what Ruth is doing. And then it's so fun because all I could think about was how exciting it might have been for Naomi. Just like, she must have been waiting all night. Like, I wouldn't have slept a oh week just God. waiting for Ruth to get home. I would have been like so anxious to hear, how did it go? What happened? Did it happen? You know, mm -hmm. like, what did he say? Did he, did he say he would take care of this? And um, I love at the very end, because this is what Naomi says. Naomi says to her daughter-in-law, she says, just be patient, my daughter, until we hear what happens. The man won't rest until he has settled things today. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, because she's just trusting the process. Yeah. As exciting as, she, as, exciting as this is and the excitement that she probably feels over all of this, um, she's trusting the process. And I think that that just speaks to resting in the Lord yeah. and where he has you in that moment. Like we all want to stand in expectation of what God is going to do. Um, but oftentimes in standing, standing in expectation looks like just resting and waiting. Yes. Yeah. So we have to wait on the Lord mm -hmm. and be patient with the father. And not worry. Right. <laughs> that is the as yeah, it says the, in Ephesians, be anxious for nothing with all things with prayers and supplications. Yeah. Um, bring your request to the Lord and he will guard your heart and mind. I'm not saying that to the exact, but that's <laughs> right. really yes. close to it. So that's the gist. Yes. yes. So um is there anything else that the Lord really No, I okay. just love this. <laughs> I do too. I love it too. And I'm I'm so excited to move on to chapter four and just break it down for you how this all shakes out because I just love a good love story like mm -hmm. let's be serious I may or may not have this morning because Kinsley's under the weather right now watch some pure flicks romance movies oh. yeah I just really love everyone loves a good love story I love and a happy ending I know me too mm -hmm. and so um definitely join in with us as we um bring to you next week's Part, what is it part four it is it's part the happy four. ending it's the happy ending. it's so great you it's don't want to so miss it awesome. yeah and remember this is the line of jesus so you definitely don't oh want to miss gosh. it oh my gosh there's so. so much in chapter four so yeah so we hope this blessed you and um we just look forward to being with you next week yes god bless your day yeah we can't wait to meet you at the master's table